It's the way. Yeah, it's the way. You ain't heard of us. Hey, Rams. Hey, hey welcome. What? Heard with us. If you're looking around for a word to trust, check the star seed journey. You can learn from us. Sex, sleep, drugs. What we gonna discuss? Whatever you need to be prosperous. Negativity is superfluous. All we really want is for you to just be true to you and be who you are, cause you are a star and you will go far. You can succeed at all of your dreams, you'll get your degree and all of those things, but you must take care of your health. Cherish yourself, your body, your mental, your brains, and your wealth. You can have fun and still be well. That's what we do here at the well. Welcome back to our podcast. Um, We have some great guests here today to talk with us a little bit about spring break. Um, We are introducing um, our first host, and here is Erica. Hey, everyone. I'm Erica. I'm a junior here at VCU, and I study HR management. Hi, y'all. Um, I'm the second host or guest. <laughs> um, I'm Pilar. Uh, I'm an HPEX major. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically um, health sciences, exercise science, physical education. And then I'm a senior here at VCU right now. Hello, and I'm the third host today. My name is Carrie Baines, and I'm the wellness coordinator here at The Well. I also coordinate the peer health educators with their programs on campus. So hopefully you'll check us out and um, come to some of our programs that we're hosting throughout the semester. So today we are going to talk a little bit about spring break and learn about how current VCU students, their experiences with spring break and how they have used their experience to help others um, plan their spring breaks and know how to be safe. Um, during their spring break time. So we have some questions that we're going to talk about today. Um, The first one is, what are some perceptions of what spring break should look like? Um, I feel like a lot of people think that when they go on spring break, they're like, oh my gosh, all these hot people are everywhere. Like they're going to like the beach, like a casino. Um, That's what most people do for spring break, just because it's like the winter here in the U.S., Um, maybe some people go across the country, um, most of the time it's, the perception is typically alcohol, attractive people, warm weather. That's normally what I think of spring break, like a a vacation in college, like that's the typical thing I go to. Um, I wouldn't say that's always correct, but that's just like the first picture that pops in my head. I think a lot of other students' perceptions of spring break could be, um, you know, leaving the state, heading out towards the beach and, you know, just getting messed up for a whole week, which um, might not be accurate, but I feel like that's what a lot of people think it is. So with that, um, previous years when you've been here at VCU, how have you celebrated spring break? Um, so I've only gone on vacation for spring break one time. Um, I went to Puerto Rico with some friends Um the spring break of 2018. Um, it was an interesting experience. Um, there was about, we had two rooms in total. And then there was like half couples, half single people. So we went there, we took a plane. Um, we were only there for, it was, I believe it was four nights, three nights, four days. And it was actually a really inexpensive trip. So if anybody is trying to find a place to go, um, definitely recommend Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful spot. Um, so yeah, I don't want to get too much into that yet. <laughs> well, my, my spring breaks haven't been so eventful. Like last spring break, um, spring break of 2018, I just went home for the week and, you know, stayed with my family. Um, the farthest I've ever been is just like to Virginia Beach for spring break. And that was with my friends. And we stayed at um, a little beach house. Uh, we didn't really go into much crazy things. We just went out to eat, went to the beach. No big deal. <laughs> So you talked a little bit about traveling um, on your adventure, Pilar, to Puerto Rico. Um, How did you feel traveling to another semi-country? But how did that make you feel like getting on the airplane without your family for maybe the first time and going with your friends and setting up the plane tickets? And um, how do you think that affected your trip and how you acted during your trip? 
Uh, I feel like that helped me take a lot more responsibility for what occurred. Um, I was definitely excited for it. Um, this was my first time without my family. I'm going on a flight. And actually, I hadn't flown on a plane in, oh my goodness, maybe 10 years prior to that. Like, I hadn't been on one since I was like a young child. Um, but I went with a whole bunch of friends that I was close with that made me feel more comfortable about the situation. Um, I actually had a friend, her aunt booked most of the... Um, or her, she didn't book the stuff, or like the flights in the hotel. But um, on Expedia, when you're looking through stuff, um, you can like search like what's like cheapest, what's most expensive, like basically bang for your buck type thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it made me feel comfortable where my money was going. Um, through that um, website, you're able to do uh, like round trip flight and the hotel that you're staying at. Like it's all encompassed in one. So we all just paid one person and she took care of it. And it made it real simple and easy. So how was your experience with planning your trip, Erica, to Virginia Beach? Was it really stressful? Um, how did it go? It was kind of last minute. My friends and I, you know, we were like all at home um, from all of our local colleges in Virginia. And we we're like, we should probably not stay at home. Um, so we decided to go somewhere local so we could just be there for a few days. I think it was just a weekend trip, like the first weekend of spring break. So it was a lot of real last minute planning like the day before and we just <laughs> we just all like um you know met each other at my living room and we were like oh yeah we should go and I, everybody's parents were okay with it they were like expecting us to not stay at home anyway so <laughs> not much planning except for like when we got there um you know we just played it by ear like oh are you hungry we'll go here nothing like extravagant so what's something that like you would have ideally have done instead if you had had more time <laughs> to plan? Oh, I really want to go somewhere like where you said you took a plane to go to Puerto Rico. I haven't been on a plane since I was like six either. So okay. <laughs> I would love to go out of state, go visit somewhere new, try new things like, I don't know, be somewhere exotic, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what other type of spring breaks have you heard that VC students have participated in during spring break? Um, I know for sure I've heard um, people go to Mardi Gras. Um, this particular spring break, Mardi Gras falls in the same week as ours, um, as our um, vacation. So for a lot of people, I know they've been there. Um, Puerto Rico was a popular one for a little bit. Uh, Miami, of course. Everybody knows Miami. Yeah. That's like the wild and out place. Um, <laughs> California for some people. Yeah, I've heard that too. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Those are like the main ones. And then some people liked, oh, Jamaica um, the, for my um, degree or for my, um, for HPEX, we have a program that's community health outreach. And some people do that for the study abroad um, or for their spring break, I should say. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and then there's also, um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Um, alternative spring break. And a lot of people can do that. I think that's a really cool option because you can go, you have to apply for it, I know, through VCU and whatnot. Um, it's about, I want to say it was like 500 to $800 for like basically the whole week. And you go and do, you go somewhere in the U.S. or you, there's like, sometimes they offer some places outside of the country. Um, and you just pay for that week. They provide pretty much everything for you. And then you just go and give. But you can also like have a fun experience while you're doing that. I think that's an awesome option for a lot of people. That's great. So a lot of times you were talking about perceptions before people perceive that you have to go to the beach or you need to go on a trip where there's a lot of drinking, but there are alternatives available here at BCU that people can participate in a non-traditional or what they perceive a spring break could be like based off movies or MTV. So that's, that's great. That's great that you all brought that up. Um, is there anything that you wish you would have known before you went on spring break? Um, well, it's not like what I wish I would have known. I knew school was like back around the corner in one week, but definitely don't drop everything to go have fun and just forget everything you just learned in the last before this week happened. Um, it was really like almost a punch in the face when I came back to classes and realized that there were things due that week I came back. So um, just probably put your backpack in somewhere you can see it so you don't forget about everything that's coming up. Is there any advice you would have given yourself? Like, is there anything that you 
did during your spring break that you wish you wouldn't have done or you wish you would have known um, tips on how to handle a situation oh, that yes. occurred during spring break? Definitely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For my oh, Puerto Rico trip, it was a wild experience. Like, it was definitely, like, I don't want to say, it wasn't Miami level, but it was definitely, like, your typical spring break trip. Um, I guess one thing, like, for, like, technical type stuff to think about when you're planning a trip, um, a lot of times when you go to other countries or um, places basically outside of the U.S. Um, or inside of the States, I should say, you need to look into when you go to the airport, a lot of times you won't be able to take a Uber, which is what a lot of us are comfortable with, or, like, a Lyft, oh, back to your location, or to your location, I should say. Um... So for when I went to Puerto Rico, you had to get a taxi. You could only pay those taxis in cash, and a lot of us didn't have cash with us. We had gotten like prepaid credit cards or something like that um, for the trip, and so that's something that also costs a lot of money, um, depending on how far away the airport is from the location you're trying to get to. So that was like forty dollars just to get to our hotel, um, versus like when you pay for an Uber, like you can have a coupon or something like that. You never know, or like a gift card. Um, something else I wish I've thought about or like wish I had done maybe better um, on my trip safety wise um, there's a situation um, one of the nights I was in uh, San Juan and I had gotten too drunk and I had to come home um, to the hotel but some of the people were still out so there was about there was a couple that was out and then two girls that were single and the two girls that were single got very very drunk um, and they wanted to go off and be alone and, like go do meet someone else like somewhere else um and the couple was like, no, 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 like, can you stay with us? And, like, they just hopped an Uber and left the two single girls. And, like, that's, like, not a fun thing to, like, think about when you're in a country or in a location that you haven't been to before and you just don't know what's going to happen type thing. Um, so just making sure you stick with that buddy system and, like, plan to commit to it even when you're, like, under the influence because it's very, very important. <laughs> Did you have any other experiences or similar experiences to Pilar, Erica? Uh, yeah, just bouncing off of Pilar's uh, story about getting too drunk. I was <laughs> <laughs> my friend's 21st birthday also fell on spring break and she rented this whole place out. It was like a hookah bar, I think. But uh, there was a lot of people and it was hard to keep track of people, especially with the birthday girl, you know, um, just trying to keep everyone happy I guess uh you don't really see when people come in or out but like when you notice you go outside step out for air uh I realized that someone had gotten way too drunk and was like throwing up all over the grass and everything and then they just got in their car and wanted to go home because they were too drunk and we were like oh my god you can't do that you know you have to really watch out for them you know um they had their keys like in the engine they were ready to go and we just took it away and they just passed out on their uh, steering wheel which um probably would have been a really bad ending if we didn't you know go out for air for like three seconds and just didn't see that happening mm -hmm. that's really crazy yeah um speaking of or since you mentioned the 21st birthday uh -huh. um carrie do you want to like kind of put a plug in for the 21st birthday program we have going on at the well right now? Yes. Yeah, so um, we at the well have the 21st birthday program. And what that is, is the month of your 21st birthday, you can come into the well uh, and you'll actually receive an email from the well talking about the program. But you'll come into the well and we'll give you a little goodie bag and talk about ways to be safe on your 21st birthday, because we don't want there to be a negative experience for anybody. We really want everyone to be safe and think about what issues could arise. So the situations y'all were talking about, maybe we can prevent the really catastrophe pro things from happening um, and just have fun and enjoy your 21st birthday and maybe remember it the next day as well. <laughs> so I know I know that might be um, something that some uh, people that are in their 20s right now might be interested in. But if you need more information, feel free to reach out to us. So that's great. Great plug. Um, now, we have a lot of first-timers that are probably thinking about spring break, and maybe they are planning it, or maybe they'll do something like Erica, where they're all at home, and they're like, okay, we want to go do something for spring break. Do you have any advice or something that you wish you would have known doing your very first spring break as a freshman? So in Puerto Rico, I'm assuming, or when you're out um, 
at a beach probably want to have sunscreen and water on you yes. because we don't realize, you know, that we can burn as quickly as <laughs> we do sometimes. So that might be a good one is oh, yes. to always have sunscreen and water. Definitely stay at hydrated. All time. Yeah. That water be tasting so good when you're in the sun and you're like, <laughs> and you're surrounded by salt water. You need some fresh water. Yeah. Keep it cold in the cooler. Exactly. <laughs> For the um, SPF there, I feel like a lot of people are just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to rub my oil over me. And I'm just going to burn. That's a really, <laughs> really bad idea. Like we, our parents are always saying, okay, put sunscreen, or I shouldn't say everyone's parents, but a lot of people say, put sunscreen on. Like if you can look, like my mom as an example, like she didn't use sunscreen. Um, she grew up kind of, she was born in the sixties. And so her time period was just kind of like, eh, whatever. Like they don't do any of that. So now she has to do um, skin treatment to make sure she doesn't get skin cancer like every single month. And, like, she'll have dots that are big and red just from, like, where they're trying to, like, treat anything. And so just keeping that in mind that you want to stay healthy. Like, um, we've been focusing on alcohol a lot and, like, the partying aspect of things during this podcast. But your overall wellness um, during your experience and how's that going to impact your future? So, like, a single like red lobster burn <laughs> will have a very long impact on your skin and um whether that be looks or it could be way deeper than that on like a cellular level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In addition to the um, sunburn, uh, not only will it last long, but like even directly after just, you know, if you've ever had a bad sunburn, just feeling it or just, just sitting there, not even moving, you can feel how badly it hurts. Um, also with the overall wellness uh just to make sure that you get enough sleep so that you can have coherent fun the next day that you're not like groggy and you know wishing you were in bed instead when you're actually doing something pretty fun mm -hmm. yeah this is really like, on the topic of wellness um carrie do you want to like explain real quick like the eight dimensions of wellness and kind of like how that impacts um different aspects of your spring break trip Okay. So we do have um, eight dimensions of wellness and some things to think about before you're planning or going on your trip is how can we look at our well-being overall and make those healthy daily choices. So starting out with the physical dimension of wellness, um, eat, move, breathe, sleep, be. So being mindful of how much we're eating when we are really busy. Um, maybe we've jam-packed our day going to see a lot of sights, you know? Um, but planning in those meals to make sure that we're completely being um, mindful and aware and we don't have the possibility of passing out when we're anywhere. Um, moving around, um, a lot of us also want to relax on spring break, but we also need to add movement throughout our day. It doesn't have to be the typical gym, but it could be going um, for a walk somewhere or um, maybe doing something fun with your friends, going mini golfing or um, to the water park or something. Um, sleep, be, breathe. Um, so also spending some time to breathe throughout your spring break. I know um, some people like to really plan everything so they don't get a moment to rest and relax, but that's also really important to add that resting, relaxing time into your spring break. Um, then we also have within the physical dimension is sleep. Like Erica was saying, is sleep is really important um, for us to feel good. Um, and so really making sure that we're allowing ourselves to sleep throughout our spring break so that we can really be that fun, energetic person um, and really enjoy our time. Um, we also have the social dimension of wellness. So that is really looking at socially how how you're feeling within your group, being honest with people if something's bothering you, especially if we're going on vacation with our friends or maybe people we don't know. It can be challenging um, because maybe before we always had our separate rooms, but now we're sharing a hotel room. So really understanding each other and being able to socially connect and standing up for yourself and saying if something's bothering you, maybe they're bringing someone home every night or maybe they're waking um, waking up really early in the morning and you wanted to sleep in. So just having the open communication to really make sure, sure, sure socially that um, you can have a really good experience um, on your spring break. Um, then we have... 
physical, social, emotional. Um, emotional, are you feeling emotionally well? Are you enjoying your time um, there? Are you um, allowing yourself to experience new things um, to really help you with your overall be- mo- um, well-being? Um, being sustainable, really thinking about the environment that you're in. Um, sometimes you're going to other places and we don't know a lot about their cultures. So being really mindful of that when we're planning to go to Puerto Rico, maybe they do things differently, learning a little bit about it beforehand so that you can respect other people's cultures and values. Um, but then also feeling comfortable enough to share it with others because that's really important as well. Because sometimes we don't know how um, to share things or do something that's cor- politically correct. Um, what other ones do I have? Um, financial, financial money, (laughs) (laughs) right? You were talking about money before financial is a good one. Um, making sure that you're planning something that you can afford. Um, I know one year I couldn't afford to go out on a big spring break. So my friend and I did kind of what you did, Erica. We were like, we're going to go to the mall of America for the weekend because that was cheaper than flying really far away. So really planning in advance, um, maybe talking to your friends uh, fall semester about, Hey, what do y'all want to do for spring break so that you can start saving money so that you can have that fun time. So you, if everybody wants to go um, to a casino or if everybody wants to go um, take a boat and go sea fishing, you can afford to go on those parts of the vacation and you don't have to feel left out. So really being mindful of that and then not over extending yourself because then you're going to come back and you're going to be stressed because you spent all this money um, and you're not really thinking about the future and how it affects you. Um, what other ones did I forget? Professional. Professional. How would that relate to spring break? Um, I guess being mm, mature in the way that you interact with people Mm -hmm. um, during your trip. Um, So maybe some of us might want to take advantage of networking um, Mm -hmm. wherever we may go. Um, So just keeping in mind, I guess, that someone's always watching and just decide whether or not you like your appearance to positively affect your professional um, the professional aspect of your life or negatively impact it. That's a great one. Like professionally speaking, thinking about social media, what are you posting on social media when you're on spring break? Um, because you don't know, it might come back to bite you and you didn't even realize it because there's a lot, um, there's a lot of people that are digging things up right now about other people. So just really being conscientious on what you're posting, um, what people are posting about you. I know in my, my relationships with friends, we usually ask each other, um, before we post pictures of each other doing something just because once it's out there, it's always going to be out there and it can haunt you. (laughs) haunt you in a good or bad, bad way. Um, Another one that we can think about is intellectual. Um, Going on vacations, I know a lot of us talk about going and um, the perception is, is like drinking and having sex and, you know, relaxing on a beach. But could we get some knowledge while we're there on break? You know, if you're going to Puerto Rico, maybe you could go and visit the different museums or see the different forts that are um, on or in San Juan. So really thinking about how you can motivate yourself in different ways and how you can get the best experience out of your spring break Um, and really thinking about like how you can learn at the same time because it's interesting. Yeah, uh, I want to tag off of that. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely taking advantage of, like, if you're experiencing a new culture, and even within the United States, I feel like you can experience lots of different cultures. Like, between the West Coast, the East Coast, the North and the South, you can learn a lot about the way we do things. Even in Virginia, um, I'm from the 757. Um, my roommates used to be from the 7, or are from the 703. Um, there's the 804, like everybody does things differently. And I didn't realize that until I moved here that like, there's so many cultures of Virginia and the way that we do things. And so just kind of like taking it in and valuing it, um, wherever you may go. And like, so you can like, um, Carrie was saying, appreciating what has already been given in there and like what's gone through their history. So you're not just there and like taking advantage of like the new them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Very good. And lastly is spiritual. Um, making that choice. Um, Maybe it is a spiritual vacation. Maybe you're going to 
a yoga retreat or something like that. So um, maybe you are doing community service with um, your church or your religious affiliation. Um, really just acknowledging it, um, not only yourselves, but like Pilar was saying, acknowledging other people's spirit, spiritualities so that we can be open with each other and be kind and show compassion. So. So great, great dimensions. I you, Pilar knows me well. I love dimensions of wellness. <laughs> and I really feel like you can put it into any topic, right? Because oh, definitely. You know, really just making those healthy daily choices and being okay if some days we don't have a healthy choice, right? We ate those donuts or we didn't exercise that day. That's okay. Um, each day is different. So, so cool. Um Going a little bit in a different direction, what are some ways that you engage in self-care over spring break? Oh, goodness. Um, so all I guess it all depends on like the way that you want to define self-care. Um, I feel like different people would define it differently. Um, personally, like that's something I would do um, when I'm dealing with a lot of stress in my life. Um, I just need to take some time and be alone um, and be peaceful. So for me, uh, maybe just sitting on the beach, like waking up at the sunrise, um, for example, like you can even go to like Outer Banks. Um, not sure if you really want to do that in March right now with this weather, but <laughs> it might be warm. I mean, it's um, 70 outside right now. Like my happy place. Um, so basically, I guess something for self-care would be finding your happy place wherever you're going. So for me personally, that's sunrise, sunset, um, near waves crashing on a beach. I absolutely love that. That's my happy spot. Um, but other people want me to find um, self-care is, or ask, excuse me, um, you don't deserve self-care unless you serve other people. And in that sense, then, like, you would, quote-unquote, need to be serving others, and that doesn't mean, like, your job necessarily, because um, in that sense, you're still serving yourself. Um, then you would deserve self-care so it all depends on like the way that you want to look at it um personally i think everybody deserves self-care um through what you're going through um so and that may be just like you were saying earlier um breathe and be so just take that time and just huh <laughs> exactly <laughs> like just exactly. get rid of that stress for a minute there <laughs> yeah um, for me, um, engaging in self-care, especially during spring break, it's kind of like taking a break and giving my body what it needs when, um, like how I can't get to it during the semester, you know, is always study, um, class, extracurriculars, etc. But during spring break, you know, you have the time, you have the opportunity to really get that eight hours of sleep, get, go back out into nature and, you know, just become one with everything around you rather than just sub submersing yourself in school you know uh personally I like to go for hikes and um I know the national parks there's like a fee to get in but uh even around Richmond you can go to Belle Isle and just you know take a short hike long hike however whatever you feel you need that day and it doesn't have to be expensive you know you don't have to okay honestly hiking can be free you know you can just roll up there or even walk there and you can bring a little like picnic lunch and, you know, just have your um, self-care time to just, you know, reconnect with everything around you. Yeah, I definitely agree with that for sure. Um, kind of hopping off of that, um, just real quick, it reminded me when you said Belle Lyle, um, how since most people that are listening to this are probably like VCU students, mm -hmm. how um, rec sports has a lot of like awesome, awesome, awesome like opportunities for very cheap that VCU students can do. And I guess I think maybe faculty and staff as well um, that um, they offer. And so whether that be um, hiking somewhere under the stars or camping out or um, white water rafting, um, paddle boarding, um, different things like that, like you can do it for very cheap. I think it's like what, around $20, if that, for maybe like white water rafting? Yeah, I it's over the very, summer. Very cheap. I know they do have some weekly events that are no cost that you can go on throughout the week. And then they also have like weekend trips that cost a little bit of money and same with um, the week long trips. Um, I know they go up somewhere in the summer. I believe they're going somewhere for spring break this year as well. Um, they also have the opportunity if you don't have the equipment, let's say you always hiked with your parents or backpacked with your parents or went kayaking, canoeing, or maybe you have all of those items at home and you didn't bring them with you to school. Um, you could possibly 
rent them um, there. And they actually have the opportunity where you can get a semester long pass, which is uber oh. cool. I think it's like 60 bucks for the semester and you can rent how much equipment you need. Um, they also have like packs of, I guess, packages where you can get equipment for backpacking, which includes like a stove and um, a tent and sleeping bags all in one so you can get a package of items which is I think really cool that it's right here and you can easily get to it and use it I mean they I know during the summer tubing is really fun and a lot of people go there to rec sports and reserve tubes so that is really a good plug for rec sports (laughs) they do have a lot of great things um, I know you guys kind of talked a little bit about um, free or low cost things to do in Richmond or Virginia. Is there anything that you think would be cool for people to do if they're staying in town versus going out of town this spring break? Um, I believe spring break, what, this year is like the third or fifth or something like that? Yeah, it's like the, fir- it's like the first week of March. Okay, mm-hmm. so I guess um, if first Friday falls under that i would definitely recommend going um there i absolutely i haven't been in a while but i absolutely love it um it's every friday first friday of the month um on broad street so um on so if you're like on belvedere um you're driving down then you're on broad and like that kind of intersection is where it starts and then it kind of ends um going heading a little bit farther downtown um they have art exhibits that are free and open to the public you can just go in and look or you can go shopping um at those art um, exhibits, um, they have different like people will be playing music in the street. Um, artists will be promoting their um, items um, on the sidewalks and whatnot. Like it's just a really fun like I believe like kind of fulfilling like cultural experience of Richmond. If that makes sense, um, yeah. I really enjoy it whenever I go. So I definitely recommend that. Um, trying out new food spots. Um, Richmond has really good food, like Newport News. I love you, but no, it's not the same. <laughs> um, so just like kind of like, you know, food hopping, I guess. Like it doesn't have to be expensive places. Like you can just go to like different like little cafes and cafeteria or not just the cafeteria, excuse me, cafes um, and just different parts of Richmond. So like if you go to um, the fan or like in Oregon Hill or um, in the art district, museum district, all of those things have different cool little things that you can explore. So I think kind of like taking the initiative and like exploring um our area because if we're gonna like say we're from bcu kind of like okay so what's there like things other than the school you know what i Mm -hmm. mean (laughs) yeah jumping off of um all the good foodie places i think my old philosophy professor he was from arizona and he was like i didn't start loving food until like i got to richmond and that was only like five years ago so uh definitely check out all the food Yelp is a good thing if you want something specific in mind. Um, Another free thing is the are the museums. You can hit up um, the Fine Arts Museum of Virginia, and that's also free. Um, It's a big area, big space area, so you can also bring a picnic lunch there if you're not looking to spend at all. Um, The ICA is also free. That's right on Broad and Belvedere. Uh, they're having a new exhibit soon in two weeks on the 16th, I think. So that'll be something to look at. Um, I guess, or were you done with there? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I know it depends on how old you are, but, um, Havana has, um, salsa night every Thursday. And so that's something that's really fun that you can go do kind of, um, it's a Cuban style restaurant, but cool. at night they turn it into like a kind of a club kind That's of environment. Cool. So if you want to go check out something like that, that would be really cool. Um, there's someone else somewhere else in Richmond that does salsa style dancing, just kind of like fun for the public. Um, I can't remember where it is though. So, but it, that's definitely an option if you guys want to check it out. I know, like Virginia Beach, like you were saying earlier, is pretty close. So yeah, you could always two hours away. drive to the beach for the day, mm-hmm. and really, it's your tank of gas, and you could always take lunch with you. Um, and depending on where you go on Virginia Beach, you might have to pay for parking, but that's a little quick and easy, fun thing to do. I know I love to go to Charlottesville on the weekends. Um, that's really fun. 
um, to go and just, you know, find a cool trail because there's um, a lot of trails that you don't have to pay to go um, go see. And there's also like the Blue Ridge Mountains where you can just go for a drive as well and just see what's going on around Charlottesville area because they have a lot of good food there, too. And they have um, a bunch of different things on UVA campus as well that you can um, participate in. I'm not for sure if Goochland Drive-In will be open by our spring break, but that's another cool spot that's really not very expensive. And it's only about a 45 minute drive from Richmond where you can go and you can experience um, watching a movie in your car. Or they also have an area where you can put a blanket down and lay down and watch a movie at night, which is really cool. And hopefully it will be warm for our spring spring break this year yeah <laughs> so and there's parks close by i know i live close to pocahontas state park and that's a really pretty park um that you can go to um and it's only five or seven dollars to get in it's very very low cost um they have a nice beautiful lake that you can go to so there's a lot of things close by and i encourage people to practice some self-care and give themselves a break I know working a lot of times we do over spring break and all of our breaks like summer break because we want to be able to pay for school. Um, but can we allow ourselves to have maybe a half day to do something multiple times throughout the week um, to really help with our self-care? Mm -hmm. And then a quick side note, I guess, um, since we were still talking about um, things that were on the cheaper end of when you're in Virginia, um, check out Groupon. They have awesome stuff. Um, I actually just bought, um, so right now on Groupon they have a um, deal. So if you, I don't know if you guys know what Skateland is. It's like the roller skating place in Chester. Um, on Groupon they have, so you can get four admissions, um, four sodas, and four rental um, skate rentals for $18, which is normally 50 That's a deal. Yeah, or you can do it for two people and that same thing or whatever, um, and that's $10. And that would normally be like about 20 or something like that, maybe like 25. So check out that deal. I'm not sure how long it's lasting, but that would be a really fun thing to do if you had one of, for the people that know what like ATL is, that movie, um, kind of get like that vibe on. There's also like those jump parks for oh, trampolines. Yes, yes, so that yes. might be kind of fun. Oh, parks. Kings Dominion or Bush Gardens. They're not too far away. They're kind of expensive, but that might be a fun little, if you're only doing one thing for spring break, that might be a fun little trip to take up there good is there anything that you think that we missed when it came comes to having a safe spring break um not necessarily what we have for we didn't miss anything like i don't think for a safe spring break i definitely ha know for a question for you carrie um mm -hmm. as a parent um when you're what do you want to hear or what would make you feel more comfortable if you're when your child is going say out of the country or to um, somewhere that's part of the US like Puerto Rico um, but isn't necessarily like inland if that makes sense um, or even to like far away to like a different state like California without you so maybe this is like for a person that's a freshman or a sophomore or even like person with like that parent that's like you know wants to keep knowing like everything that's going on in your life because I have a lot of friends like that what would make you feel most comfortable about your child going somewhere else so I know this personally just because when I was in college I traveled a lot of places um, and then my early career I went overseas and I lived there for two years so personally with my parents and then how I feel is preparing yourself and educate yourself about the culture about the transportation that is available, what things that you need. So making lists of what what I'm going to do and have the plan all in advance. So when you're sitting down and having the conversation and you want to go somewhere, really having the knowledge so that they know that you've planned ahead of time and you know what you're getting yourself into. You also um, aren't going alone. I know that's a big thing. Um, I did not take my first alone trip until... I was 27, where I traveled by myself in Cambodia and Thailand. So really being 
knowledgeable that your parents just want you to be safe and they want to know that you've taken the time to think about how you can be safe Um, because you can go to the places that are deemed unsafe and be safe as long as you're aware of your surroundings you have some sort of plan um, and you acknowledge that you can get hurt but you have something that you're going to fall back on so setting up a time with your parent when you're going on a trip that you're going to actually call them. Okay. (laughs) Because I know that's very hard, um, but set up with your parents. Maybe it's a text every day at a certain time, or if it's FaceTiming when you're at the beach, Um, just having that open relationship with your parents and, and letting them know um, what you're planning and what you're thinking and maybe get their input and kind of take some of their input and put it into your plan which could be calling them. That's a big deal is calling Um, and just letting them know how you're doing. So um, I know when I went overseas, my mom knew I was in the process doing it. And she was very, very nervous about me going overseas for the first time by myself. She had never been on an airplane before overseas, and then I was doing it before she did. But I just made sure I planned actually the first time to be with an organization, to be with other people, that so that she knew that I had someone to help me if I was in need. Um, and that's something to think about. Also give numbers of your friends, because things have happened on spring break Two individuals, like you're saying, trafficking or other things can happen. So letting your parents know who you're going to be with, their phone numbers, maybe their parents' information. So if something does happen, they know exactly where you are to help you. Um, and that's how what I I think and what my mom has always taught me um, is to really be conscientious of your parent and how you can help them be okay with it because sometimes it's guiding them because that's their first time as well letting go and allowing you to be an adult um but really proving yourself as an adult the first time so that they're like okay I got this and maybe be involved in the planning I don't I don't know when you all went to college or doing things the first time going to target with your parent and preparing you know, picking up the sunscreen or picking up, you know, your new swimsuit with your mom so or dad so that they are a part of it so they don't feel left out. Now, I don't know if that's something you all want to do, but <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I did with my mom um, and dad before I left. And I thought that was worthwhile. And that's what I would expect, hopefully, from my child as well. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. One thing I noticed that I had written down for us to talk a little bit about that we didn't get a chance to um, talk about is sex on spring break because we have so much free time. Um, sexual opportunities might arise during spring break. So um, you don't have to give me your experience, but um, what do you feel that students before – they go on spring break and maybe they have that first experience of making a decision, um, how they should handle it. What advice would you give them to do? So you're asking um, what kind of advice we would give for someone that's having sex for the first time on spring break or um, just like in general? Just in general. Um, I think of being aware um, of... When you're going on spring break, typically the idea when you're having sex with someone, <clears throat> unless you're going with a significant other, is you're going to be hooking up with new people, new partners. And that that always comes with a risk. So the best thing you can do if you do decide to do that, um, in my opinion, would be obviously use um, some form of a barrier method. So whether that be a condom, um, internal condoms, dental dams, oral condoms. And I know lots of us don't use dental dams or oral condoms, but... In all honesty, you can still transmit um, different STIs um, when you don't use those methods. And even if you do use any of those, you're not 100% guaranteed to not have an STI or STD. Um, I received one um, from a partner who I was in a relationship with. I was on birth control, so I was like, oh, I don't need one. And then 
no, you do need one. Um, and that's going to prevent it, but that doesn't necessarily a surefire um, mean that you're not going to end up with one. And it's not the end of the world at all. Like, it's definitely, it's a hard thing mentally, more so than it is physical. But um, that doesn't, like, you can still live your life in a fine way it's just a matter of also taking responsibility um for the fact if you do receive one on your trip um making sure you are telling your partners after that and then it makes sure you have that conversation um and this may not be comfortable but having that conversation with the person that you want to have sex with on your trip like hey have you been tested um and they may lie to you honestly and so you really need to push for that and a lot of people don't show symptoms either and so it's kind of like one of those things where if you want to be sure about it you have to like be real strict on it um but that's obviously up to someone that's their choice it's more so like understanding being aware of the consequences that may occur and then you choose what um decide or what option you want to take if that makes sense cool and a quick plug we do have condom concierge Does anybody want to explain a little bit about that program? Uh, Yeah, it's a Google Docs form, I think. Uh, You can reach it through the well on the website. On the, web, on the Wells mm-hmm. website. Yeah, and uh, it just leads you to a Google form and you can just uh, fill out your information, like your name, um, your VCU email, and your V number if you want to be identified with it. And you can just choose, there are pictures of condoms that you can choose which ones you want and how many you want. And basically the Well will get back to you in a few days, um, confirm your... Your pickup. Your pickup. <laughs> and then you can just, whenever they have it ready, just drop by and pick it up. Yeah, and you can That's, just choose like yeah, what and kinds it's free. you want, how many you want. Yep. They have magnums, y'all. They got dental dams. They got all flavors. I'm just saying, like, what, what's CVS? What's 7-Eleven <laughs> yeah, anymore? What's the point? Like, just go. Condom yep. concierge. It's free. Like, if your friends are like, oh, like, I don't really feel like it. Like, okay, weigh the options here. Okay, like, let's yeah. be real. And plan in advance. Yes, jumping on to spring break. You should always be prepared. We need to make sure we bring them bring them with so yeah. plan in advance make sure you have something there in case you make that decision that day that you want to follow through mm-hmm. even if you haven't made a decision and you're not sure what you want it's better to be safe yes definitely and even if you have made a decision it's just like having it on hand so that you know that you can be protected mm-hmm. um you shouldn't always rely on the other person like oh do you have some kind of contraception like mm-hmm. um always put that on yourself because you're the one you're Yes, for sure. I think also, too, um, maybe having a conversation with your friends before um, you take a trip for spring break about their sexual intentions with either anybody that you're going on a trip with or anything like if they want to if they're open to having sex with like a new person that is like just as a hookup, um, making sure that it, maybe like because you don't know how drunk someone's going to get mm-hmm. and like you don't want them to regret anything or make it like making sure that they make it a sober decision and also helping keeping them accountable oh, that's a good under one. the influence. Yeah. Um yeah, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> no, it's great advice. Great advice. Awesome. Well, I think we have quite a bit of information here um, today. So let's go ahead and go over just some quick tips on um, how people can stay safe during spring break. So I so number one, stay healthy. Let's keep hydrated. Remember our um, sun safety. Eat some good food and sleep. Yeah, and the next one, the next tip is to be safe, um, whether you're having sex or, you know, out in the sun, you're in a group, you're traveling. Just make sure to be prepared for all of that. You know, think about it beforehand and have all of the things you need, condoms, sunscreen, you know, everybody's phone numbers, all of that. Um, another tip, uh, eat good food while you're there. Eat lots of it. Like, just indulge. Honestly, y'all, like, we get that little um, love handle on the side, a little bloatation going on. You know, it's okay. <laughs> like, we're here to have fun. Okay, keep that in mind. Um because honestly, who cares? We're all drunk or anyways, or some of us may be drunk anyways. Like, it's a blurry situation. <laughs> but, and all jokes aside, um, eating healthy food while you're on your trip and before you have any alcohol is very important. Um, just to make sure that you're not getting hit hard, quote unquote, um, when you do decide to drink. And making sure that you're not, if, just 
little nutritional tip and whatnot. Uh, making sure you have lots of carbs. Um, it's going to give you lots of energy even when you're out in the sun, staying hydrated, things of that nature. Very cool. And lastly, have fun, right? Mm -hmm. You're going on yes, spring break. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you have a week off of school. Hopefully you've planned something fun um, and include some self-care in there. Yeah. Yes. Right? Check in with yourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Awesome. Cool. Um, just wanted to add something else real quick in, um, into this podcast. A quick plug. Um, I'm personally part of the Pure Health Education, Pure Health Education Program at The Well. Um, so is Erica. Um, it's an awesome program. Um, Y'all should definitely check it out. It's I have an amazing time. Basically, we have it's about a three-hour commitment every week. Um, we meet um, pretty much every week for about an hour. Um, on a given date and time, uh, we do different events. Basically, we were promoting health awareness, education. So basically, essentially the eight dimensions of wellness um, that Carrie talked about. And we have different um, groups and that we work with and create programs for y'all to enjoy. So there's a lot of like work that goes in behind everything that occurs on campus. And we get to be a part of like a kind of like, I don't know, the working elves, the little minions behind that. I don't know how else to describe it to y'all. Um, it's a really fun opportunity, though. So um, there's lots of certifications that we get to enjoy. There's gaming in the rooms, the free events, um, friendships. Um, so just definitely give it a check. Um, check it out, y'all. It's an awesome experience. And working for the well is really cool. Like everyone's super nice there, really inclusive. So if you're looking for something like that, kind of check us out. So yeah. So we're doing our recruitment right now. So if you have any questions. Um, please let us know. You can check us out on the website and our email is purehealth at vcu.edu if you'd like to email us um, and ask any questions. And our applications are for next year. So that's um, fall 2019. Wow. And spring 2020. So those are the two semesters that um, if you're interested in the Pure Health Education Program that we're looking for people um, to participate in. So any other questions? Other things you want to add about peer health, Miss Erica? Um, it's it's a good thing to do if you want to be really involved on campus because you know, like Pilar said, we do a lot of events and there's a lot of thought that goes behind it. You know, um, just from the title of the event to what we're gonna do and how we can promote things, um, it's it's really good trying to like include everyone on campus and. Just have everyone be inclusive. Cool. Okay, so we do have some upcoming events. Um, the Peer Health Educators uh, each Wednesday are having Wellness Wednesdays, so you can check us out. We're located all over campus. Um, we have a calendar on the Wells website that um, tells you where we're going to be at each week and what their topic is for the week. So please look at our calendar and see the PHEs on Wednesdays around in our health hut. Um, on Mondays, we have Mindful Mondays, and that is um, just time for people to come in and have a little bit of self-care on Mondays and really um, start our, our, our week out really well, um, and that's at noon every Monday at the well. And then we are planning a big event for you all on February 28th. Um, it's Safer Spring Break. It's a big event that we all want you to come to. And we're going to have lots of fun things for you to do, a little alternative to traditional spring break. And then also um, we'll be there and the peer health educators will be there to answer any questions that you have about how to stay safe during spring break. Yeah, so uh, our next podcast topic is going to be self-care. So hopefully everyone stay tuned until then and we'll be speaking about self-care. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pilar and Erica, for joining Thanks me for having us. in the Safer Spring Break talk. Um, we had a good time and we look forward to seeing you around campus. Thank you. Yes. Have fun. Yeah, bye, y'all. Have a great time. Well